Yo, yo, what's going on? Y'all, it's your boy Devon Terrell, the living weirdo. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I like to EQ my vocals. Real basic, real simple. I also did graduate from Full Sail University and I physically went to school for this stuff. So I'm going to show you some of the mistakes that I've made and I don't want you to run into. So let's get right to it. All right, so first things first, what I like to do is I like to actually listen to the vocal. So I'll put it in solo. Uh, actually, I'll play you a little bit of it. It's a rap song called From the Coffin, uh, one of my songs that you'll probably never hear. And it's a smooth rap vocal, very conscious type song. Uh, I'll let you just get an idea of what it is without anything on it, just sounding like crap. It's fair, and now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off, and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark, and all I hear is silence. Cool, Should've... so you can hear the vocal. So let's get right to it. So first thing I like to do is, obviously, I like to solo the vocal. And the very first step I always do is, I like to add a de -esser. And what I like to do with the de is, I like to get rid of the sibilance that I already hear in the vocal. A lot of people record with certain microphones that are very s and T. And basically what that is, is that high-end sound that can become very jarring to your ear. And that's when people probably will turn off your music. What a lot of people don't realize is, uh, that fatiguing of the ear can basically make people tune out. So that's what I like to attack first. I like to attack the problems first and get rid of it. So I'll let you hear the vocal with the de -esser and without it, I'm gonna keep popping it back and forth and then you just kind of just pay attention and listen. Make sure you try to listen to headphones or else it'll be harder to hear. So this is without it. It's fair. And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark and all I hear is silence. Should have connected with y'all, man, I was really wildin'. Being dead, I realized death is what makes time so priceless. Felt like I lived forever, but it was taken from me. It's really something, my heart was okay, black. So if you listen to that closely, you can hear when I engage the de you can hear those S's and T's come down. I'm attenuating those S's and T's because they can become very jarring to the ear over time, especially when we start to add compression, which you know we're boosting those problems. So that's why I like to do that. Offer it, get rid of the S's and T's because that's gonna be a huge problem. If you notice right here, I have it attenuating the vocal at 4237, 4,237 hertz. And that's usually where I find my issues in my personal preference for vocals when I'm trying to get rid of those S's and T's. I actually learned this trick from a popular engineer by the name of Leslie Brathway. You can check him out. Um, this is where I kind of got my range from. But this for this particular vocal, I didn't like that sound, that frequency. That's where I was finding most of my S problems that was bothering me, and that's why I attenuated. Um, usually it's higher with certain de but for me, this song, this was bothering me here. Cool. So next thing I like to do is I have an EQ. I like to do subtractive EQing. And basically with the subtractive EQing, I'm getting rid of more problems. And like I told you, the reason why I like to do my EQing first before I add any compression or anything like that is because I don't like to boost the issues. I want to get rid of the problems before I even uh, you know, start to boost them. So this is why I do this here. And it allows you to have more headroom when you get rid of certain frequencies so that when you boost, you're only boosting the good stuff. Cool. So I'm going to show you what I did first. So the first thing I did was I rolled off a lot of the low end on the vocal at around 136 hertz. Now, for some people that might be unorthodox, but for me, that was personal, personal, personal preference for this song. So that's what I did. So I'm going to show you a before and after of what I did with the vocal. So this is it here. So this is without it, and then I'll engage it. It's fair. And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark and all I hear is silence. Should have connected with y'all, man, I was really wildin'. Being dead, I realized death is what makes time so priceless. Felt like I lived forever, but it was taken from me. It's really Boom. something So home. as you can hear, I rolled off a lot of the low and the vocal because sometimes, well, for the most part, it's not needed and it's going to eat up a lot of the headroom when I start to compress. And this is why I like to do subtractive EQing before I start my compression um, because I just want to boost more of the good than I do the bad and then not have to attack it later on when I'm actually mixing. So if you look closely, I rolled a lot of the vocal low end off at 136. So I'll engage it, I'll take it out, um, and then I'll put it back in and let you hear. It's fair. 
And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt so on my name. So if you listen real close, make sure you listen to the headphones. You can hear the vocal kind of pop. You can actually hear me letting off some of the, the low end that it actually gets to sound brighter. And this is great because then you're, you're doing this without actually adding anything to the actual vocal and destroying it for the most part. Also what I did was I take a little bit out around the 200 hertz range. This range uh, bothers me a lot. Uh, usually it's very boxy. So I like to get it out and get more clarity out of vocals. So I'll punch it in and out so you can hear it. So without it. I think it's fair. And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it cool. on my body. So if you listen to that carefully, you can see that the vocal even became a little bit more clear, less muffled. And it also gets rid of a lot of the plosives, even though it was recorded with a pop filter. Just very helpful. The next thing that I actually do is, if you can see, and I know you probably like, what are you doing? I take out some, of, some more in the high end at the 5.44 kilohertz range. And the reason why I do this is because, once again, I'm trying to attack the problems and those S's and T's, I'm telling you again, can be a huge problem. I know you listen to a lot of records and they seem, they're very bright and um, there's so much clarity, but they don't, they don't hurt your ear. And there's a certain way to accomplish that, for me personally, that I do. Um, there's more that I'm gonna show you, but for right now, I'm just gonna show you this attractive stuff and then what I add. Uh, so basically, I like to take out even more at that 5.44 kilohertz range, even though there's already a DS or previous to it that's doing the same thing or basically attenuating that. So I'm taking out more of that annoying frequency that I do not like within the vocal. So listen closely. I'll punch it in and punch it out. So this is without. It's fair. And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark and all I hear is silence. Should have connected with y'all, man, I was really So if you wobbling. listen to that closely, to my ears, I hear the high end get a little bit smoother. It, it, it gets a little more pleasing to my ear and I know I can actually listen to that longer. So I really like to do that subtractive EQ in part right there. And basically, for this vocal, this vocal is actually recorded like in a room somewhere. So I took down a little bit more in the one kilohertz range, which bothered me a little bit. So just to let you know, uh, preference, that's a preference. Now we'll move on. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to skip past what my compression was. So after my subtractive EQing and from the de-esser, I like to do my boosting after. And the reason why I like to do this is because when you use the compressor, obviously you're going to squash some of your dynamics, but I like to boost after that, and the reason why I like to boost EQs, EQ uh, after that is because it brings back a little bit more of the dynamics in the vocal that you kind of lost within the compression. So I like to do a subtractive EQ, compression, and then I boost slightly on the end of that chain. So I'll show you what I did. Uh, so basically this is without, I'll let you play it. I'll play it for you and then I'll engage it and put it back in. It's fair. And now I can't speak, I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark and all I hear is silence. Should have connected with y'all, man, I was really wildin'. Being dead, I realize death is what makes time cool. so priceless. So right then and there, off rip, you can hear the vocal gain a lot more clarity. And that's just with me doing something so simple. All I'm doing is boosting at around the excuse me at around the 8000 kilohertz range at the 8000 hertz range excuse me i am boosting at about 4 db and the reason why i'm able to even boost that much is because i've done enough subtractive eqing to where when i boost it it doesn't sound so jarring to your ear so real simple i do a small little high shelf on the vocal at about 8000 just to give it some more uh, clarity and that's just specifically for this song you'll also notice right here that I added about a DB of uh, of a boost at about 2000 kilohertz uh, excuse me, two kilohertz. And the only reason I do that is because if you notice, two to four kilohertz is basically presence. That's where our uh, vocals are most heard. So I like to boost there just to give me a little bit more presence. And that worked a lot for this song. So that's basically what I did there. So I'll let you hear it with and without the EQ one more time. 
is fair and now I can't speak I got so much to say I should have said that I love you if I could I would hug you but I was so caught up in what I was doing I always put you off and now I'm laying here in my cool. coffin and I actually let you hear this with the song engaged so you can get an idea of where we're at now listen closely is fair and now I can't speak I got so much to say I should have said that I love you if I could I would hug you but I was so caught up in what I was doing I always put you off and now I'm laying and here now I'll let you hear it without it It's fair, and now I can't speak. I got so much to say. I should have said that I love you. If I could, I would hug you. But I was so caught up in what I was doing. I always put you off, and now I'm laying here in my coffin. Don't throw dirt on my name, just throw it on my body. I'm here laying in the dark. Boom. So that's basically how I like to EQ my vocals. Um, very simple and um, very easy to do. Simple steps. Um, and basically, uh, you know, I, I'll show you in my next video how I like to actually compress my vocals to get it to sound like that, to get it to sound more punchy and things like that. Now, I know a lot of you saying to yourself, how do I get that real top, top end sound that's very clear and crystal without hurting the ears? I'll show you that in another, uh, in another video with the same song of how I achieve that. Um, the essence of that thing and that's it so basically that's how I like to EQ my vocals that's a very basic tutorial of how I like to do it uh, in the next video I'll show you guys how to compress the vocal same thing uh, head on over to that next and enjoy Shimo Devon Twitter living weirdo that was a tutorial on how I like to EQ my vocals